Hello and welcome Kenya departure to October, the Kenya departure that is kicking off the new season of our gap year, the, our gap year trip. So this is really exciting for us and it makes us feel that we're back in the game, back in the field. So you haven't got long to go, just a few weeks. Now, the purpose of this um, pre-departure Zoom is to get you organized. So we only have three of you now that are listening in. So I'm going to, this is being recorded, so I'll send to everybody else. But for you guys that are here, okay, the aim is that you feel organized by the time we finished. So stop me, answer questions, just, you know, let's just wave, catch my attention. As I run through, okay, your flights, your itinerary, visas, kits, health and safety, safari, scuba. Okay, those are the main things, topics that I want to cover. So starting with your flights. Okay, I'm just going to get up the right spreadsheet. You are all flying on the 5th of October. Heathrow to Addis or Cassie, you are coming from Washington. You will meet everybody in Addis. So I have set up the group, lovely Zoe has set up the, the group WhatsApp. So when you get to Addis, okay, two things to be careful of. One, as soon as you come off, you know, switch off your data roaming on the plane, okay? Do not switch it on until you get into one of the cafes on, on the top level, okay? I didn't, and then I literally got nailed about 30 odd quid. Okay, you know, a real rookie error. Don't be foolish like myself. So when you arrive at Addis, you will have to go through another whole palaver of bag checking and going through another security check. Then you go up the escalator onto the top and the cafes are just there on the side. So everybody just go into a cafe, log in, and then you can communicate so Cassie can meet up with you guys, okay, with the Brits. That would be the nice thing to do. We also have Cassie. We've got you coming from Washington. And we've got Teddy, who is also flying in from L.A., is going to meet you in Washington and then make the journey with you. Okie dokes. So I think Zoe has added him to the WhatsApp. So you just need to coordinate with him direct to who oh he's, he's he got to install it so then he will make 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 contact with you okay so um that is all good when you get to Mombasa brace yourself arriving in Mombasa is like arriving in a rather large kind of empty depressing looking shed that's what it looks like it has gotten it's nothing fancy so again you're going to have to go through um Passport control, visa control. It's a long, arduous, hot and sweaty process, okay? When you go through, eventually, -na, you will pick up your bags and then you will go to the exit, the end exit point. There are um, guide, leader, want, someone from um, the um, Oceans Alive will be meeting you there. I don't know quite who it is yet, but they will be there with the minibus to take you to camp. That journey depends on the traffic, but it does take about an hour and a half to two hours of dodgy traffic, okay? And then that will take you straight to the camp where you can then swim in the sea and breathe. You are there on the Indian Ocean in paradise, okay? So your itinerary, you, apart from, Jack, is it you that's only going for four weeks? No, no, it's not, you're going for five. One of you going I'm going completely mad wait let me just look at the list um is only going for four weeks hello jasmine um nico he's going for four weeks that's right okay so where's my zoom gone um you're all going to kind of arrive and be that weekend settle in and be shown around and that kind of weekend you'll get over your jet lag um, and finding your feet. On the Monday, all your projects will really kick off. 
Every week, you are doing a mix of the marine conservation, the community work, um, uh, the marine conservation, the community work, and the gardening. So you each each project has its own kind of um, leader who kind of is is in charge of that project full time, three hundred sixty five days a year. Who you will meet. And they will show you the ropes and you will get into the swing of it. OK, so no two days are the same. Um, it's going to be a complete mix up because the marine conservation, that is getting, where you are literally coral gardening, that has to be done at low tide. So the time of day, which day, you know, will be tide relevant. But you will experience a mix of all that every week. At the same time, you will be experienced going into the local markets, bartering there's lots of kind of entertainment they have fancy dress parties bonfires on the beach there's a great volleyball pitch just down um the beach and this wonderful little cafe kind of cool restaurant where you'll spend far too much time but that's you know that is the setup at the weekends okay you don't have anything you know officially organized for you so but they can organize anything you want. So talk to Des and Tilda who are, you know, overall in charge of you and say, right, okay, we, we actually want to go down to Khalifi and maybe we want to stay the night there. And there's a great little place called Salties, which everybody loves. It often has live music. If anybody wants to learn to kite surf, you can join in, you can kite surf for an hour and have a quick lesson. It's a very kind of cool place. So Khalifi is about a half an hour drive away and it does have a great backpacking vibe. So it is very easy to go there for the day. If you wanted to stay the night at the backpacker's place, you can, but you know, talk, 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 talk to Des and Tilda and see what is available and what, what, you know, what they recommend. Okay, other things that are happening at this time of year is, are the turtle hatching and the whale migration. So you'll be fully involved in seeing that, you know. So when you get hollered, that's because the whales are traveling past. So it will be everyone getting their binos and, you know, having a look as they go. Um, so any questions on the itinerary so far? Last point on the itinerary. If you absolutely love something, you know, and you think, God, I love doing that, tell doesn't Tilda, because you can do it again. You know, everything is flexible. If you think, oh God, that was absolutely dire, I really don't want to do that again, tell them, okay? It's your trip. You know, we know what the goals are, what we want you to experience. But if you want to do, if you absolutely fall in love with the, the marine gardening, you know, talk to them, tell them that is what I want to do. I really want to do more of that rather than that. Okay. It's all open and flexible. Okay. All, all happy on the, on the plan. Yeah. Jasmine, are you happy on the plan? No. Okay. Um, visas. Everyone's worst nightmare. Have the four of you here got your visa? Okay, great. Okay, because it is a it is a complete pain. If you haven't got your visa, and I know Teddy in the recording, you you haven't. So we're going to help with that this afternoon. But if you haven't got it, don't dilly. Get in contact with me, and um, let me just see if there is something that needs to be done because we can get. Um, Tilda has a great contact at the visa office in Kenya who can, you know, help chivvy things along. So don't, don't um, ignore that. Um, kit, okay, what you're going to take. Right, so on the kit list, I'm just going to get it um, up on my screen. Is everybody... Um, hold on two seconds, hold on two seconds, where's Kenya, wait, 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 come on computer, okay, so in your my leap area, you will see the kit list which is um, outlined. 
So at this time of year, the climate, it is actually peachy perfect. The humidity is low and the temperatures are just perfect. So kind of mid twenties. So it couldn't be better, but you want, so you want lightweight, cool clothes. You're not gonna wear your jeans, you know, forget those. You're going to wear thin, thin cotton. However, on safari, it does get chilly at night. So you definitely need to take a fleece or a hoodie or something cozy, okay? Most people during the day are wearing shorts, kind of sporty tights, you know, um, style tops, which are quick drying. Swimmers, swimsuits, boys, your shorts. Take as many pairs as you got because you're going to be living in them every day and you don't want to sit around in wet swimmers, okay? That's not good essential stuff which you have got to got to take is a uv sun rash, rash vest okay that is essential reef shoes do you know the types i'm thinking of they're like those little neoprene rubbery shoes which you're going to walk because when you walk out to do the coral gardening you're going to be walking on kind of broken bits of coral kind of sharps so you want to protect your feet it's absolutely critical that you take those um, and a snorkel and mask. That is absolutely critical. Do not skimp on that. Get a good mask because when you're coral grown, you've got your face underwater all the time with your snorkel. So don't take a leaky snorkel. That is my message. Um, in your essentials, water bottles take at least two water bottles and don't take the plastic ones because if they're left out in the heat, then you'll end up with boiled water. So take the metal ones, which have got some form of temperature control on them. Head torch, vital. Two towels, really useful. A day rucksack, really useful for just a small little rucksack, which you're great on the plane so that you can put your kind of day kit in when you go off on day trips. Um, your main bag. Now, this does not need to be a rucksack, okay? It can be a duffel bag, but what we ask for is that it's not a hard shell, okay? So it needs to be a soft shell so that it can be pushed, squeezed, and easily strapped on the roof of Land Rovers and the, squished into the back of minibuses, okay? So no hard shell suitcases, but it doesn't need to be a rucksack. Okay, um, plugs out in Kenya, they are UK plugs. So um, Teddy and Cassie, you need the UK adapter. Okay, sunglasses, oh God, you, you would be amazed how many people lose their sunglasses and you can't buy them out there. So take a couple of pairs. Um, portable phone charger, not really that important. Um, might be important when you go on safari, but you know, if, if you've got one, take one. If you don't, don't don't go and buy them because they are expensive. Um, but everything else, those are the kind of have a look at the kit list. What I also want, you do have a VIP member coming to visit you part way through the trip. Um, so could you all please? Girls take a kind of skirt, which is kind of below the knee style skirt. And boys just a, you can wear shorts, shorts and skirts, a shirt, just something. No, a t-shirt's absolutely fine, but it's girls more just, we need something kind of more presentable than short shorts, just something that's below the knee. Okay. All will be revealed when you're out there, but you, it will be quite exciting for you all. Um, and I can't tell you who it is because I'm sworn to secrecy. Um, but that is happening towards the, I think it's the 26th, that date of October. So watch out. Um, anything, any questions on the kit? Hats. I'm looking at Jack's hat. Please take a hat, if not two. Really, really, it, you know, when you're out and about during the day. Okay. Um, Health and safety, everyone's favorite topic. Okay, out in Kenya, when you arrive, you will have the briefing from Tilda going around the house, the camp, giving you kind of health and safety 
you know, tip. So it feels much more relevant when you're there. The key things just to remember is don't go stroke, stroking feral dogs and cats. OK, just don't do it because you don't know where they've come from. And they're probably covered in fleas. If they've got a collar and a little dingley bell, then, you know, they're from one of the families that live, you know, on, on the beach. But if they're not and they look a bit pesky and feral, just don't go near them. In the camp, they do have a lovely dog who has the dingley bell and he will become everyone's favourite friend. In the camp, we've also got a few tortoises. Now, they are not to be picked up and kind of, you know, walked around the camp. You know, they have their nice little home and they want to stay there. Trust us, I think the last group took them on safari. You know, it was just not appropriate for the tortoises. Um you will get lots of monkeys that come in. So um, you've got to you know, close close your windows of your little rondels, your houses and your bathrooms so they don't start nicking your toothpaste. You'd be amazed what they nick. They love anything kind of cosmetics, creams, pills, Nurofen. You know, they will whisk it off and you'll find it scattered somewhere down, down in the camp. Um, so don't touch random stuff. If you get any cuts, okay, you are in the heat and the humidity with the Indian Ocean. Okay, so any cuts are not going to heal like they would in our lovely dry environments. Okay, so they need to be looked after and jumped on immediately. If you see they're getting red and slightly like mm, not looking healthy, raise the alarm and we'll get you straight to the doctor. There is a brilliant clinic 10 minutes away at Vipingo Ridge, which is a uber smart um, golf club, literally 20, yeah, 10 minutes away. It's great to go there. You can go there once a night. They'd kind of do two pizzas, you know, a pizza for half the price or something. But it's a really nice place, kind of golf club. Da, da, da. But um, they've got a wonderful clinic there. So anything you need, they can do everything. If you were to break your arm or God forbid, or do anything that needs more than a clinic, needs a hospital, then you will be transferred to Mombasa. If you needed something more than that, then you would be medivaced up to Nairobi. So it's all very easy. The medical facilities in Kenya are actually extremely good. So malaria tablets, it is an issue um, at the coast. So you do need to take your malaria tablets. I, we recommend taking the Malarone, which is the kind of the bog standard one. Um, but if you take them and suddenly feel really out of sorts or maybe a little bit depressed or just like, God, I don't feel myself, go and talk to Tilda about it. Because sometimes they can make you feel, oh, just, you know, they, they don't suit everybody. If they don't, then we'll make a plan, an alternative plan, um, you can come off them. So you are provided with your mosquito nets, okay? Look after your mosquito nets because and, and make sure they're all tucked in. If you find holes, which, God, they could so easily rip, you know, talk to the staff and we can get them um, sellotaped up. Um, at night, you want to shower before it goes dark so that you can put long trousers on at night. You spray up your ankles and feet. Girls, the best thing to wear are those um kind of pajama style trousers you know with the elasticated bottom of the leg i don't know what you call them so what do you call those types of trousers like aladdin pants but those are really good because the mozzies can't shoot up your leg so you just need to spray your foot anyway that's my top tip that's what i always wear when i'm at the coast um so spraying up at night showering before it goes dark spraying up is really really useful um getting how you know sickness and diarrhea now this often happens it can happen the, you know especially if you go out and about and eat food in one of the cafes don't eat the samosas on the side well you can eat the samosas on the side of the road but just make sure that they're cooked properly um but if you do get sickness and diarrhea, you know, Imodium is very good. I always recommend you, you don't take an Imodium for the first 24 hours and you drink lots of Coca-Cola because that really kind of helps put the um, sugars back into your body is really, really good. Um, but those are the main things that people look out for. Um, the malaria, cuts, 
sickness and diarrhea. That's what we usually come across during the course of a Kenya program. Okay. Any worries on the health and safety? All good? All good. Okay. Now your safari and scuba. So most of you have let us know what your preferences are. You do not need to make a decision on either of those things until you get out there. Okay. If you could do one, I would definitely choose the safari over the scuba. Okay. That is um, something that is really, really special. And it, if it, you all decide to do it, which most groups do, um, you could do it for two days, three days, four days. And Chris, who our safari man, he will come or invite you to his house and talk you through all the options. And the reason why we don't get anything solid before you get out there is that he knows what the weather's like and therefore where the water, best watering holes are and so where the best part in East Savo National Park you should be aiming for. And he will script it, curate it with you on the ground when you're there. He is brilliant. Um, and so you will see, I guarantee, most things with him as your guide. He's awesome. So that usually happens on the third weekend of the trip. Kind of usually most people go from the Friday to the Monday over that weekend. And then you come back and then you finish off everything else that you want to do. OK, so any questions from me so far? All good? Um, where will we be staying? Okay. God, I'm so sorry. How have I not told you? Right. Okay. You are staying in a place called Kur Kuruitu. Okay. It's a tiny little town, um, just down from Kalifi. So it goes, uh, Kuruatu, um, Kalifi, Watamu, uh, Malindi, going up north, 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 till you get up to Lamu and then north, 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 up to S S Somalia, back up, uh, right up there. So it's a very, very sweet, lovely little bay. Um, you're living at our accommodation called Pope's, which is right on the beach. Now, Pope's used to be an old hotel, so you can imagine it's got a little pool on there, lots of different areas where you eat, and then these little rondavel houses, which are very basic, OK, it's not beautifully clean. It's, it's beautifully clean, but it's not like like it's it's basic, but really cozy. And then you've got steps right onto the beach. So you've got, you know, you've got hopefully all of you will be in um, the, the kind of the front rooms. If not, people usually get circ circulated around so you can all take it in turns to have your um, sea view. OK. All your cooking is done in the house. So that, that is your main base. Wi-Fi and telephones. Um, there is Wi-Fi in the house. Now, it's good enough to WhatsApp, but it's not good enough to download and start streaming movies. Okay? So if you want, you know, to download before you get there, do. Okay? There is really reliable electricity, really reliable local um telephone um, service so mobile service and so what they will do on your first couple of days is if you want to get a local kenyan zim card then that's very easy to do okay you just buy one pop it in your phone and off you go and then it's easy to communicate but some people do some people don't paying for things out in um kenya the local currency is called the shilling um, you can get the Kenyan shillings out from the ATM on day one. You can probably do it at the airport if it's if it's alive and being refilled. But if not, then you'll be taken on day one into um, into the local town to get to get the to get the local currency. OK. Any other questions? No. So we don't we don't really need to take much cash. No, don't take. Um, I no, actually, well, you could when you're at Addis Airport, everything is in US dollars. So if you take if you took kind of ten to twenty US dollars, then that will be enough just to get you through. Or you use your card, a kind of Monzo Revolut card, whatever you've got. Um, but that's the only place for US dollars when you get to Kenya. 
you will just pay for everything in Kenyan shillings. Okie dokes. Yeah. Um, how much money are you going to spend? In the camp, they will have a bar. So selling kind of beers, Cokes, you know, and all that type of thing. They do a weekly shop. So if you want anything, then they, they, they restock it. So you can specify, could we have this? I particularly love cider. Could you get me some cider? And then they just have a tab, tab kind of situation where you, you help yourself to a beer and just kind of jot it, jot it down. And then you pay at the end. Okay. So that's, that's how it works with that. But all your food is included. So if you want to go out, you can, but you have to pay for that. If you don't, everything is in is in is in the house. Okay. Laundry, you can wash your underwear yourselves in the shower and just hang it up. Or you can ask one of the lovely ladies who works in the camp to wash it for you. And they don't, they don't usually charge, but if you wanted to kind of give them a tip, kind of five, the equivalent of about five dollars a load, depending on how much you've given them then they're fully appreciative of that, okay? Now, the water in the camp is a bit brackish, okay? So the shower water, they've got a couple of fresh, you know, kind of um, water showers, but most of the rooms, it's a kind of brackish, brownish water. So don't be alarmed. That is just how it is. That's welcome to Africa. So everything comes from kind of big boreholes in the ground. So um, you could, you know, just, just ask where the other showers are. Any other questions? I think that's it from me. Okay. The, la uh, the last thing I want to think is just kind of everyone's morale. Okay. We know that it's a big challenge for everybody to head on this plane and go and kind of meet. I think there's a team of about nine of you now, maybe 10. Somebody was going to join today. So, it you know it is a kind of scary prospect, but so just all be kind to each other, go for it. You know the first few days, and then you get into a rhythm, and you really you know you'll kind of love each other by the end. I promise. So um, you know Addis Airport, it's the kind of you who you know I am so, you know moment, um, and then that's where it really kicks off. Okay, so everyone coming from England. Look out for Teddy and Cassie at Addis Airport. That would be nice. Okay. It's a pretty small airport. You can't really get lost. Okie dokes. And if you are feeling out of sorts, homesick, a bit, oh God, you know, I'm not, you know, whatever, whatever weather, talk to Tilda. Okay. Talk to, she is just gorgeous. She's a mum like me. She's just heaven. She's lived out there all her life. And, um, has seen so many gappers come through, so you can't shock her. So, and she's very, very kind and will want to make this trip really good for you. Okay. Oh, and the last thing if you are going to misbehave and act like an idiot and ruin it for the others, okay, I will hear about it. If anybody does that, and trust me, we have had a few idiots in the past, and for example, get absolutely hugely drunk and start vomiting everywhere. And it's just acting like a kind of, you know, someone's just done their GCSEs. Not that everyone does that when they've done the GCSEs, but you get my gist. You know, if you keep doing that and ruining it for everyone else, you'll get a letter from me saying, right, that's strike one. And then you'll get a strike two. And then if you do it again, you're off the program. So it's two strikes and you're off. Okay. So. I hate talking about that because I feel like I'm a, you know, school, school teacher, but there we go. Okay. So that is it for me. I wish you a brilliant, brilliant trip. And between now and departure, any questions, give us a call. Alice, Zoe and I are here to make sure you are all organized. Okie dokes. Goodbye to you all. And safe travels. Look out for your VIP guest. Goodbye. Bye.